Welcome to St. Margaret de Ville. We witness the healing ministry of Jesus in our readings this weekend. Jesus has power over every possible illness. He is there for us in our pain and discomfort. Open yourselves to him as he ministers to us in the Eucharist. Though restrictions have been lifted on places of worship, please observe all protocols, social distance, mask, and hand sanitize as you enter church. We will also require contact information and a response to the usual COVID checklist at all public places. Let us pray today for true healing in mind, body, and spirit. Our presider is Father Bernard. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Brothers and sisters, as we gather together to celebrate the Sunday Eucharist, in today's Gospel, Jesus heals a man who is deaf and mute. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our need for God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with a terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a man with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing a fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Returning from the region of Tyre, Jesus went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a man who was deaf and who had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears. And he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ephatha. This is the word that Jesus speaks in today's Gospel, and we are told that it means be opened. The word Ephatha is one of the few Aramaic words that are still preserved in the New Testament. That is the language of our Lord. And this particular word is important because this book that I'm holding here is known as the Rite for Baptism for Children. And when a priest baptizes babies, after the baptism has taken place, there is an Ephatha prayer, the same word that Jesus uses. And the prayer goes this way. The Lord Jesus made the deaf hear and the mute speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. And so, my dear friends, in baptism, not only are we washed clean of original sin, not only do we become sons and daughters of the Most High God? Not only do we become members of God's family, which is the church, but we are also given a particular mandate, which is to love and to serve God here while we are on earth, so that one day we can be citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And that is really what we need to pay attention to that even though we live right here on earth right now, it is only temporary. Our real home, the Bible teaches us, is in the kingdom of heaven. Now, as we think about that dual citizenship, our citizenship here on earth, and our future citizenship in the kingdom of heaven, we have to ask ourselves, what is the Lord asking us to do while we are here temporarily living on this earth. We are called to give witness to Jesus Christ, to make a difference in the world by the way we live our lives, to change the world and to build up the kingdom of God. Because when we say the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, we address God our Father and we say certain things in that prayer. And if you pay attention to what you say later on, you will hear those words. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean? It means that God's kingdom, which is a kingdom of justice, of peace, of joy, of holiness and righteousness, which exists in perfection in heaven, we are committing ourselves to bring about his kingdom here on earth. That is why we say, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. 
And so by saying those words, we are saying to God, I, as your beloved son or daughter, through the sacrament of baptism, am promising you that by my life, I will bring about these beautiful values of your kingdom, of justice, of peace, of holiness, of joy, all of these perfect values we are striving as Catholics, as Christians, as disciples of Jesus Christ to bring about right here on earth. Now, how do we do that? One of the ways that I would suggest to you that we have an opportunity to do that is in a couple of weeks' time, each one of us will have an opportunity to make a difference in the way our country functions. And I'm alluding, obviously, to the federal election. Now, people say, why are you talking about politics? Think about it. We are living here on Earth, and we have to do whatever we can to influence the society in which we live. So we cannot simply sit at home and say, we don't need to be bothered by voting, by involving ourselves in the democratic process, by changing the way our country operates for the better. And that is what this election is supposed to be. Our vote has to consider everything that goes into electing a candidate. And that is why the word ephatha, that Jesus speaks to us when we're baptized, is to allow our ears to be open to the Word of God. Because when we listen to God's Word, it transforms our mind and our hearts. And then we are able to speak clearly about the Kingdom of Heaven. And one of the ways we speak is by casting our vote, by saying that we want to be citizens of this country, to make it a better and more perfect country. And so, my dear friends, what I would suggest to you is that you take some time in the next couple of weeks to think about everything that the Church teaches in regards to how we should vote. The first and foremost principle is the respect for the human person. We believe that our lives are a gift from God. Life is very precious. And so right from the moment of conception, when a child is being formed in the womb of his mother, until the moment of death, we are to stand up and defend life and protect it and speak up to, to defend it, this wonderful gift that God has given to us. And so everything from the moment of conception until death is something that should concern us. And that includes the poor. That includes health care. Because if we're sick and we can't get an appointment with a doctor, that affects our life. And so all of these issues are things to consider. Another thing that Jesus tells us in the Gospel is that he cares very deeply for the poor. In Matthew 25, he said, whatever you did for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did for me. So he identifies himself with the poor, with the marginalized, with the widow and the orphan. And so he says, take care of the poor if you truly want to enter the kingdom of heaven. Seeking the common good, which basically means to pass laws that will help everyone to achieve their potential. Solidarity with the indigenous and with refugees. What are we doing for their rights? And stewardship of creation, which basically means care for the environment. So all of these things should be considered when we choose the candidate or the political party for which we cast our vote, because that can change the course of the direction of our country. So my dear friends, I encourage you to go on the Archdiocesan website or the website for the Canadian bishops and find out what our faith teaches so that you may inform yourself, discern what is right, and then cast your vote to speak 
the words that Jesus is speaking in your ear. So my dear friends, today, once again, one, uh, Jesus in Holy Communion will come to us. We will encounter him personally, and he will touch our mouths so that we may proclaim his word. He will touch our bodies to heal us so that we may go out into the world and proclaim to all creation that Jesus is the Lord of our life and he wants us one day to enjoy the eternal life prepared for us in the kingdom of heaven. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God listens to our needs, we present our prayers and petitions in faith. That God's salvation may reach to the ends of the earth through the ministry of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they will work together to bring God's peace to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation on Labor Day, that all work will be directed to God's glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been impacted by hurricane, flooding, and fire, that the Christian community may help everyone to rebuild their lives, homes, and communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those on our parish prayer list, that they may trust the Lord as their refuge and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for whom this Mass is being offered, for the souls of Giulietta Barato, Michael and Teresa Camiso, Zo Gonzaga, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones, that they may share in the gift and promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we offer you our prayers. Open our hearts to listen to your word and our lips to proclaim it without fear. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord is the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good to all the world's holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. So now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, 
and grant that, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of your gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In baptism, God made us his sons and daughters, and so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
act of spiritual communion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, just a, a few announcements, a few things I would like to highlight coming up in the church soon. Um, once again, thanks to all those who helped with the Garden Day. We'll probably have one more Garden Day before the onset of the, the fall season. The weather is getting a bit colder already. already. Uh, a couple more pictures from our Garden Day. Um, this guy we put on our lawnmower and we couldn't get him off at all. So, and... This is my um, brother from another mother. <laughs> okay, so there's the garden day. Thanks a lot once again, all those who assisted. Um, our novena 
to Our Lady of the Lankani continues at 6 p.m. every evening with Mass. Mass follows at 7 p.m. Come and pray for good health for yourself and your family. There she is, Our Lady of the Lankani, modeled after the same statue that they have in India. This coming Wednesday is the feast day. I invite you to come and celebrate with us and we have a, a special intention basket. Now, if you are not attending the, um, the, the, the novena, you can still go into the chapel. The intention basket is right there. Get a slip of paper, fill out your intention and put it in the basket and they, we will be praying for you. Um, tomorrow evening, um, Alpha Ministry will be putting on their um, all-night uh, vigil. Uh, this is a, a picture from the vigil last year. Very beautiful. Um, it, it's, it's really an event to experience. If you can't come, if you are not a night person, you can try to pop in maybe for half an hour or an hour or so. Um, there's a little bit of everything. There's praise and worship music, healing prayers, devotions, and there will be reconciliation as well. It begins at 10 p.m. and it ends at 6 p.m. on Labor Day with Mass, which is the, the holiday. So if you can make it, come out and enjoy yourself with us. Uh, just a reminder that in order to facilitate the all-night vigil, our normal 8 p.m. Mass is going to be at 7 p.m. instead, one hour earlier. So please take note of this. If you have any family members or friends who are planning to come um, to that mass. Um, you are asked to pick up new envelopes. I realize every week I keep seeing new people in the church. Well, not new really, but persons who have not been around for a while. Um, please pick up your, your new envelopes um, from the parish office. And we would prefer if you do not use your old envelopes because it, it gives the, um, the office... Um, manager a lot of trouble to sort of track down who this is and um, you know what name and contact information is attached so we would prefer that you use your new envelopes please um, a reminder that confession is available on specified days or by appointment and I think we know what days those are I'm not going to repeat them today um, once again, our 5 p.m. Mass continues to be live streamed. So if for whatever reason you can't be here on a weekend, you can still pick up Mass and the preaching and whatever else and have a devotional time looking at it. It's right there on our parish web page when you click on YouTube channel. Um, we require you to continue hand sanitizing masking in the church and now you're also required to sign in and provide us with your contact information we just need your name and telephone number those who are desirous of becoming part of our rcia program this is where catholics who have not received some of the sacraments can still avail themselves of the opportunity to get uh, confirmation uh, First Communion, whatever the case might be, and baptism as well. So if you or anyone you know would like to receive these sacraments and you are now an adult, please register with the parish office. Please grab a copy of the bulletin on the way out. It has basically everything I've said, including a bit more information. Thank you and God bless you all. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful o Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your love. Thanks.